My name is Mark Gordon, and this is Center Stage. So happy you could join me this evening. Coming up on June 9th, the Faring Foundation presents world-renowned singer-songwriter Motion Namju, and he's going to be accompanied by renowned Farawala Quartet, and it's the U.S. premiere of On the String of Tears Bow. So gracious that he could he could come and join us on the show tonight. Motion, good evening and welcome to Center Stage. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, and uh, I say uh, hi to you and your uh, audience, and uh, yes, ready for you. And I... So you're going to be coming into town. First, you're going to be over at the uh, at the J. Paul Getty for a discussion um, about your music, and you're going to also your your stuff is very um, not only music, but it's also a visual exploration of the arts. Correct? Yes. For this album, uh, I did uh, two years of research on the concept uh, behind uh, behind behind the album. Research on different traditions on all cultures along the Silk Road to find the songs and sounds they use when they mourn, when they mourn for their lost ones. And also, I trained my vocal cords to be able to uh, recreate the very low pitch sound, like wah, like throat singing, mainly used in Mongolian culture. Also, oh. many songs on uh, rural and different parts of Iran. And uh, this project started from a collaboration between me and uh, Shirin Neshad and Shoja Azari, uh, who are uh, internationally famous artists, fine artists. That's why this is my first collaboration between audio and image. Yes. Well, when you, when you uh, were a young man, when you went to Tehran University, you studied art and music, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I was accepted uh, in two different universities. One was uh, drama school and another one was music. Definitely my main goal was going to music, and uh, but I, I started with drama, with, uh, with uh, theater programs uh, for two semesters, then I went to music. But uh, f- uh, finally I left all. <laughs> What, what what was it? Did you just feel you weren't being uh, artistically satisfied in university? And you tell tell me about that process. Yeah, I, I'm that um, that time definitely no was I was I was unhappy because uh, the through my teenage uh, when I was teenager uh, for five four five years I was trained in a very exact traditional a way of singing and uh, when you go to to uh, learn instruments or vocal singing uh, in a traditional way not in a western way uh, you uh, you uh, you should uh, go through the repertoire which is uh, some scales and uh, each scale contains uh, short short melodies and it it takes like some years to learn uh, all of that. And I was uh, uh, totally trained. And uh, when I started university, and the university program was going to repeat all of that. That's why it was, was very bore, boring and also time-wasting for me. And also the view to the music unfortunately it was not that open and uh, for example they had no idea what uh, western music modern western music and uh, for jazz blues and uh, rock r&b all of these things they, they, there was nothing to in the in their program just some parts of very classical music from baroque or uh, romantic or classic uh, period oh, and uh, not Mm, practically, just just theories. So, let's run this down. When you're in your 20s, uh, a friend of yours introduces you to The Doors music. Yes. And, and <laughs> I know when I listened to The Doors, it blew my mind. Tell me what it did for you and how that influenced your music. That was, that was a point of, the, like, Point of changing, you know that uh, I and it it suddenly happened. I I, I, um, I stayed in a friend of mine's house, and to the morning, uh, I just woke up with this 
with this song, broken through to the other side, broken through to the... And I, I thought, wow, man, this is another way of singing. This is, this is another way of uh, using your loving. And I had no idea what is... Uh, what uh, Jim Morrison is talking about. Uh, and, uh, I had no idea, like, uh, even, like, um, right now my English level is not that good, that, and that time was much, much worse than now. And uh, I, had, I even didn't understand a word. But, but uh, the way of uh, using larynx as, like, uh, putting the entire passion, entire body, and entire expression of... Uh, uh, of, of, I don't know, of art, of music, uh, art of music was so, so uh, inspire, inspiring and, and I was so impressed. And that time I said, okay, what is this? They said, American rock. <laughs> mm. And after that, I was drowned to the uh, 60s and 70s music. Well, you talk about, because I think of Jim Morrison, and, and he really was, it was just, it was raw, and he he just basically was in the music. And mm -hmm. I was watching some videos of you singing, and it really looks like you're going to a place where you're at the deepest depths of your soul to produce this sound. And it's it's amazing how you do it. And I think it's that that cultivation of what you learned your training and just being in touch and being inside that creativeness let's say where you can go to those depths and be totally self unaware exactly you know i was i was mm, supposing myself like if john lee hooker uh, Jan Anderson from Jethro Tull or Jim Morrison or all of these maestros were supposed to be in the uh, Middle East, in Turkey, in uh, Iran, in uh, India or, or in, in one of the uh, in Arabic, uh, uh, Arabs country to go to the music class and uh, just be, be sit, uh, the, seated there to learn a traditional way of awas. We, we call it awas, you like me singing, singing is awas. And I was, I was supposing myself, okay, you can carry two stories inside yourself. This is yourself and your story, your roots, your background, your past tense, past uh, time, and uh, Jim Morrison, which is uh, the modern way of singing, and uh, also not modern in form, modern in content, and also. Uh, many different ways of uh, having protest, having uh, yelling, stream, uh, screaming, and uh, like uh, being in front of the cruel world. And if you're gonna carry these two, you can, uh, you can suppose yourself in West and this, ma this Western maestro in East. Mm. That, that was one of the ideas that I, I I came with. <laughs> well, I need to let everyone know that um, you're going to be over at the uh, the Getty Center on June 4th at 7 p.m. It's an artist talk. It's a conversation with Moshin Namju and Sharon Nas Nashat and Nashat, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Soja Asari. And uh, mm -hmm. you're going to be talking about their the collaboration on the string of Tears Bow. The musical and visual odyssey investigates the confluence of culture along the Silk Road with interpretations of traditional songs by Namju and video and photographic installations by Nishat and Azari. Sounds exciting. If you want more information, uh, go to Farhang Foundation because there's also they're, they're presenting uh, you and your concert on the 9th as well. So that's very, very exciting. Um, and you can also, uh, I guess you can get tickets online for that. It's reasonably priced. So, uh, Getty's such a one. Have you been up to the Getty before? No, this is my first time, and I'm so, uh, so excited and uh, honored. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. And the room you're going to play in is so intimate. It's, it's, uh, I think it doesn't hold that many people. It's just, if, if it's where I think it's going to be, it's just, uh, it's going to be such a great venue for you to share your story. Um, so I encourage you to go out 
If you're listening, go out and see that and um, find out more about this, uh, shall I call you a cultural icon, which you've been called. Tell me about when you were, when somebody called you the Bob Dylan of Iran. <laughs> I was asked many times about this question. But, uh, I know, and, and the other thing, Moshin, if I ask you something, you know, I don't want to talk about it, just say, no, I've, I've already, I've already, uh... <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, I'm ready to to go ahead with this. Uh, there is uh, um, that was I think September 2008, if I'm right, uh, in New York Times that the, the writer uh, had an uh, essay about me, and he called the he named me as you know when we, we I think. Her idea, the 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 author idea, was uh, uh, talking about the uh, the exact process in that time um, uh, in and also social issues with the between the, the young generation and the government and also the 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 regime actually uh, at that time and the, my my songs and some. Some songs of uh, my friend was uh, was gonna be um, kept in the in the new generation's mind, and they were repeating them. I think contently she supposed me as a like because she compared my lyrics with the, the great maestro Bob Dylan. But the musically is not that close. Definitely doesn't need to say that I'm, I'm so honored <laughs> to mm. be named like this. But, but musically is different because uh, my music is, uh, based, is based on mm, like having a bridge between the very, very tradition, traditional way of music to the to the modern era, but uh, uh, Mr. Bob Dylan is uh, is doing like uh, I think musically is based on country and some part of rock. But uh, but uh, I myself know Bob Dylan as a poet. Always I was naming him poet. I was saying that musically uh, uh, I'm not gonna like. Uh, a study about Bob Dylan musically. I'm, I, I have like a world respect for him as a poet, and uh, fortunately, finally, he won his award <laughs> for mm. for literature. Yes. The new CD on the string of Tears Bow. Where did you come up? Uh, tell me about the title. Yes, uh, this is a, that, that was a uh, last last line of uh, lyrics. Like title lyrics that uh, I mm, wrote wrote for this album was uh, when uh, in this world when I was supposing mm, that because this this album the entire album is dedicated to the all drowned people in Mediterranean Sea from Trojan War to the Syrian War and that's why I I was saying in this world uh, having calmness and uh, like relaxedness is like being on a on a bow when is when it's ready to shoot to be shoot mm. that's why it says uh, on the string of the bow which bow tears bow on the ninth you are going to be over at the mark taper forum uh, for the premiere of On the String of Tears Bow. And you're going to be playing with uh, an Italian quartet, Farah Yulala? Yes, uh, this, this, uh, I have collaborated with uh, Farah Yulala, an Italian a cappella band, uh, who are experts in Italian music, also East European and medieval, medieval music. They're, they're like a bridge. The, that helped me to connect sound from uh, East Asia and Middle East to, to East Europe, actually. So where do you draw your inspiration for your music? Mm, I'm always trying to 
to do a new experience. You know, each album, even when I'm out of, uh, outside of Iran, uh, I didn't stop. I just, uh, uh, album by album is, is uh, inspired by a different story, inspired by a different way of music. Uh, my first one when uh, uh, I came to the United States was uh, 2009, was uh, my, my personal uh, love stories and having a narrative music through, through the love, but with different forms. The next one was inspired by um, American jazz, exactly uh, the different uh, uh, way of uh, modern jazz that I was going to mix that with the, with, the, uh, with the Iranian music, with the traditional scales. But this one, the, the last one that we we're talking about, uh, is uh, the, 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 the very general um, point I was going to share with uh, your audience is uh, this music doesn't stop them to understand because uh, it's not about the meaning. Uh, they, they, they don't miss that much where they don't uh, speak Farsi or they, they, they don't understand the words because, because it's more about the form uh, than, than, than meaning. It's more about the signs and the, the beautiness of the words uh, beside each other. Also, uh, many Iranians don't understand uh, some parts of the lyrics. Uh, because uh, it's like a formalistic approach to the Persian language and to the Persian poetry. Do you it, think? Do you think it's it, about the rhythms? But do, do you think that the music resonates on a deeper level? It's we hear that we hear that sound, and and we get behind that sound whether we understand the language or not. It's like we understand the exactly. intention. Especially on this album, when, for example, when you when you're listening some some prayers from from I don't know from different uh, uh, religions or different uh, cultures, uh, Buddhist or Jews or Christians, uh, uh, you you maybe don't understand uh, their language, uh, Indian language, Hebrew language, or Latino language, but but you can feel the. They're doing something, that, and this, and you can feel that this is a deep, this is a, like I don't know, a depth in in their, uh, in I don't know, in their bodies, in their minds, in their language, in their sounds. And uh, my inspiration for this album was uh, like flying or being floated on uh, on these different ethnicities, and uh, the. Quote was very simple. I shared many times with the audience uh, or with my friends that uh, I'm uh, imagine uh, imag like I'm supposing a corpse who is moving from Mongolia to East Europe, and every uh, like each ethnicity is crying, praying, chanting. Uh, and uh, mourning for this as as uh, its own son, its own uh, last last one, or 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 yeah, or last soul. And uh, but um, I was trying to do these different techniques and different music with my own lyrics, not 100%, like 60% of that. And uh, the rest was uh, based on Farawala, a cappella band, and also some, some different uh, recorded music from prayers, different prayers. Well, it has the universal themes of loss and rebirth, and I, I, I think that that can be seen in a literal sense, or it can just be... Uh, the rebirth of a new you when you discover something new about yourself or you have an experience where you go through this journey and you come out on the other side? You know, is, uh, I'm not going to be too much philosophical or sad uh, to the, tonight with this interview, but uh, honestly, 
mm, you can you can accept that uh, we are going and uh, entering to a to a to a more sad uh, situations of life uh, the, uh, this year. I don't know, not sad all about the fights, also about the stupidities, also about the <clears throat> brutality and uh, mis like misconnections. Mm -hmm. Many, many, many different things. For, and uh, even, even in, when I was, um, I don't know, I was at the age of 20, 25, when, uh, when uh, in, you know that that uh, very bad event happened in the United States that the bullying for Columbine was uh, made uh, based on that event. Uh, I was I was so shocked, but unfortunately, recently that we are just we're having these this events like more and more, and it's, when we're numb, we're like we're just uh, it's like something very uh, very usual for us. And uh, outside of uh, outside of our country is much much m worse than this. Also, for you know, different the areas that are uh, is like everyone is fighting to another one, and uh, uh, that's why um, I I'm. It's very hard to me to be optimistic about the mm -hmm. about the future, uh, honestly. That's why you, mm, when you ask me about the inspiration, is to just having something in front of that, it's like uh, like having a reaction in front of this this brutality. But I mean, do you think that that ultimately music can can offer this rebirth, and we can eventually come to a place where there is a new understanding? I mean. We were talking uh, during the break about this need for more love and compassion in this exactly. world. Exactly, yes. Is that one of your intentions through your music, is to... to Definitely. Not, not only this album. I think that my, I don't know, my, my goal of, of producing music generally is... I'm not sure that I'm doing very well, but just trying, trying to to share the empathiness and also, uh, as you said, uh, compassion to the other people. To just uh, think about the good thing between each other. Like, uh, you know, every note and every beautiness of the sound is something similar between two points of this Earth planet that they are way far from each other. From Philippines, for example, to Australia. Two persons from there, they don't know each other. Maybe they don't trust each other. But with having an instrument between them, they're close. Like they, they, they have lived, they have been living with each other like for, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years. This is magic. This is a miracle of uh, music. And uh, I don't know, sometimes I'm happy that I have this opportunity to to just try, 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 to, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to maybe, maybe having a very, very a small rule to make people close to each other. Why don't we listen to another track from On the String of Tears Bow, and this is uh, yes. Labak. And what can we listen uh, for in this song? Labak has uh, 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 also has no has no specific meaning. Labak is like a, is, when the, the, they have a, a anniversary of gathering Muslims, they go to the Mecca to just having this uh, this gathering with the, the with the God, and and they they use this word to God. Everyone uses a Labak. Labak means like I'm with you or you're with me or I have this commitment to you or something like this. But uh, for me, this meaning was not important. For me, what just uh, musically is uh, is very rhythmic. La bike, la bike, ta -ka -ta -ka -ta -ta -ka -ta -ka. That's why I use that for. The melody is inspired by a very old uh, pop Italian song, which is. Da 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 da
the the original song is called Viente uh, Cuatro Mil Abaci, means uh, 24,000 of kisses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I used that melody from 63, maybe 1963, and used a part of uh, some Persian words in in a different rhythm. Like, and you can listen to that. <laughs> And that was actually a track from On the String of Tears Bow. And uh, that was by my special guest this evening, Moshin Namju. And he is going to be over at the Getty Center on June 4th at 7 p.m. And also he'll be at the Mark Taper Forum, which is going to be a great venue to, uh, to see this music. Uh, and that's going to be over uh, June 9th at 7 p.m. The Music Center's Mark Taper Forum, and uh, the Farhang Foundation is presenting this world-renowned singer, songwriter, Moshe Namju, accompanied by the renowned Faruella Quartet for the U.S. premiere of On the String of Tears Bow. And um, it's also in collaboration with acclaimed artists Shirin Nishat and Soja Azari, and also, too, if you want to find out more about Farhang uh, Foundation, go to farhang.org, uh, farhangfoundation.org, and you can find out, uh, find out more about this, uh, this organization. And they recently, I mean, they're doing some really great stuff. There was recently the Celebration of Iranian Cinema, which uh, I saw a wonderful film out there. And they're doing some. They're doing some nice thing. And the nice thing about uh, Farhang Foundation is it's basically it's non-political. They're just there to um, to kind of uh, share Iranian culture, art, and they're doing a lot of wonderful things. So uh, feel free to uh, feel free to go to their website and check that out. And who knows, you might find something that is interesting and fascinating and might just change your life. It's a non-religious, non-political, and not-for-profit foundation with a mission to celebrate and promote Iranian art and culture for the benefit of the community at large. I read that you did music for Hamlet. It was a new uh, production of Hamlet. That's exciting. Tom Bridgley was the director uh, who, uh, I think who is currently in Philadelphia, but uh, was working in a water, uh, water world uh, theater company, and his idea was uh, when how, how is when Hamlet is an Iranian intellectual guy at the at the beginning of the 20th century and uh, like the, instead of coming back to the Elsinore, he comes back to Iran and he comes back to the to the royal family in Iran. Everything uh, was same, like even the names was uh, same as Hamlet, but the situation was uh, in the Middle East, and the costume design was also was not Western, was Iranian. But when he uh, when Hamlet hires those uh, actors to uh, to see what happens uh, with his uncle. Those uh, those actors were doing their shows in a very traditional uh, way of uh, uh, theater, Iranian theater, uh, and we call it uh, Tazia. Tazia is mostly for religious uh, religious events, and uh, when they're gonna. Uh, have a, something like funeral or or having a memorial of uh, uh, really, uh, of the uh, Islam mythology or or, or just uh, different uh, heroes uh, that at the beginning uh, of uh, Islam era like uh, Muhammad the prophet sons or grandsons they this this way of uh, uh, Theater came up very slowly uh, in in a in a like a very long duration in 407, 400, 500 years, and uh, we call it Tazia. Tazia is uh, and the, the way 
interesting and smart idea of Tom Bridgely was having this way of uh, theater mixed with Hamlet. And definitely he asked uh, me to do a music for that. But uh, I should also name my friend Arian Mayet, who is a 20 award nominee and is a Iranian American uh, actor in theater. And uh, he was uh, doing Hamlet and he was so, so great. Hmm. And uh, was, uh, my, the, the, the main point of uh, inspiration for me was, uh, was these two guys, Tom Bridgely and Aryan Mayet. Well, speaking of acting, you uh, received an award for your work on a film called Radio Dreams. So you, are, so, <laughs> if, if, we can, if we can name it a award, I don't know. But, but yes, you, but that was a, a fest, film festival in, in urban, uh, urban uh, South Africa, yes. What haven't you done? I mean, you've played South by Southwest. You've been an actor. You're a lecturer. You... Uh, a uh, singer, a songwriter, a uh, composer. What is next for you? I mean, how do you... I, I look at your portfolio and I think, wow, how do you do all this stuff and just keep... You're, you're so prolific. How do you... I mean, do you ever have moments where you, you have uh, writer's block or you're blocked with the creative process? Or if you do, how do you just push through that? Because I don't see it here. Yeah. Uh, some of these works uh, I'm asked, I was asked to do. Uh, uh, that was n not m my plan. So for example, the Radio Dreams was a was a story by Bob Jalali who was going to direct the movie, and he also did great job. And I had no self confidence to 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 be an actor as a main role to in that movie. He he guided me. To, uh, I uh, I. I've done once before in Iran was in 2000, 2002 I think yes and there was that movie also was a successful successful movie by Sama Salur, a friend of mine it was called a few kilo dates for a funeral and he won the main award of Lucarno Film Festival but uh, after that I moved out from Iran and uh, this movie, Radio Dreams, was my first experience. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, ignorance helps you to go, <laughs> to ig go through. Ig 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 ignorance helps. Yeah, it's just like you just dive right into it. Hey, th there's yes, a when, 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 you, when you, you are ignorant, uh, you have no... Uh, you have nothing to be afraid of, and then you just do this as, as doing this, and n musically not because music is my main my main love, my main job, and uh, and right now when I'm talking to you, I have t three, four uh, next ideas to um, to they're ready to produce, and that just I should uh, get time and money to go through, but aliens. Uh, it's just environment, friends, and different stories, and also ignorance. When you have you have no idea about the job, you just do that as your pleasure, and it happens. The next, the next one is a is a book based on a, a, like an analytic book based on the, the way of music I passed is. Is a analyze of, analyze of my my own songs like in is is like close to two hundred different songs and uh, I'm writing about them theoretically and also about the the point of inspiration lyrics and some some parts of uh, uh, Persian classical poetry is Rumi Hafez. Yeah, and, uh, you, I, I was reading that part of your inspiration comes from Rumi. What is it about Rumi that uh, inspires you? Uh, unfortunately, the, when Rumi is uh, translated, the the one is missed is rhythm. Rumi is full of rhythms. If uh, I, I mean, I mean, it was it, it was great. If 
in every event in the United States. When they're gonna, uh, every event about Rumi. When they're gonna read Rumi, also having someone to just listen to uh, Rumi in Farsi, in Persian, to just listen to the rhythms. Because uh, definitely in Western culture, in, in, a, in a country, in a culture like America, the people, I mean like, like ordinary people, they have better idea of rhythms than Iran. Because, uh, uh, because uh, music was not forbidden on and off, you know? And they definitely, they, they were listening to music. In Iran, uh, music is a, like, a, like, a, like an enemy. It's like someone, uh, uh, this um, regime, doesn't like that, that one does, that one doesn't, you know, it's like on, we have, we had music on and off. Like ordinary people in Iran, their, their idea, in general idea about music is less than the United States. That's why when you, when you hear having an event about Rumi, if you ask someone, Iranian guy, who can just read uh, Rumi in Farsi would be much, much different. For you, because Rumi is like a drummer, like an absolutely drummer. For for uh, for Americans, content is very important. Uh, his content and also uh, his mysticism, his calmness, his uh, way of uh, uh, way of uh, like when he guides us to the to the sky, to the calm area, to just being away from this uh, violence of life mm -hmm. but if you go through that that way of Rumi also in Farsi rhythms is much much uh, more uh, more much different is for example Rumi based on uh, besides uh, being a poet is a drummer to me that's why my inspiration of Rumi was just it's his rhythms. He's mm. full of rhythms. He's like a, I don't know, like uh, any drummer you can like, like Lars Ulrich maybe. <laughs> mm. Well, you, you mentioned something, and I wanted to cover this briefly. When you came to America in 2009, you, was it that you found out that you were going to be arrested because you had used music for, uh, what did you, took the Quran, you put music to it, and then... Yeah. Like, you, you couldn't, is it true you couldn't even sell your music in your own country? Uh, uh, selling, you mean? No, because you you weren't able to even sell your, your music in your own country. No, no. So you, you uh, could, my, my only, my only uh, album was published in Iran was six months before uh, coming out. Uh, my first album, Torange, was published in Iran. And that also, that one was... A, I got a lot of troubles after after that. So, so d you came to the states and then you found out, or did you know you were going to be arrested? That's why you came. Yes, was a like a yeah. The, the, the October two thousand nine, I came to the United States, and uh, two months before that, like in the summer, I found out after the uh, what happened at Green Movement in two thousand nine. Then the, you know the. The a generation they demonstrated in in uh, Tehran and the other cities uh, in front of against the uh, Ahmadinejad because they he because he cheated uh, in election and that's why they they uh, many of them they were arrested and I was out uh, out of Iran in uh, Vienna in Europe but uh, I got troubled. My trouble also was regarded to to that that event because they knew that I'm I'm gonna I, I have done this music. Mm. Wow! So that that took a lot of courage, didn't it? To do what? What was your ultimate uh, intention for doing that music originally? Originally, it was a point of research, honestly, because, uh, and also, that's, that's funny. Uh, I was asked once uh, in, in intelligence service in Iran by a, a part of the Revolutionary Guard, the, 
they have intelligent service and they they definitely ask you to go and and when 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 something odd <laughs> comes out they they ask you okay what, what what's going on who are you and what what are, what are you doing and i said this is a point of research i i'm doing um this melody was inspired by ricochet uh, which is a, a melody by a tangerine dream a, a rock band from like psychedelic uh, psychedelic rock band uh, in your in uh, 70s and uh, in a different way we have traditional way of choral singing that i'm expert in that because in my uh, age of 15 16 i learned that in different classes of choral classes like choral singing and also here we have english language there we have not Farsi, Arabic language. And this is my first time I was not going to use Farsi language. I was going to use Arabic language. And I think the best artistic and the best, like the most, most artistic and most beautiful uh, Arabic poetry is Quran. To me, Quran is, uh, I, don't, I don't support and I don't uh, care about the Quran's uh, uh, meaning or Quran's content. To me, like Rumi, I said, like, so to me, Quran is full of rhythms and full of rhymes. I use this to just mix this different, and the, and the style of singing we have here, like Roger Waters as a rock singer. There we have like uh, maestros of uh, Quran singing. I'm gonna just mix these elements to each other. He was shocked and he was <laughs> between laughing and crying. <laughs> but he said, "Okay, I don't know what you mean, but but you, uh, but uh, till now it's okay. But after that, you should go from here because uh, you're you're gonna get trouble if you're gonna continue this way of uh, uh, production." And uh, that was my story. <laughs> that time they were not gonna uh, put me in jail. In jail. After uh, those political chaos happened when I was in United States yes they got me that five-year sentences which means if I go back to Iran I should go to the jail well we're almost out of time I need to remind everyone that uh, coming up on June 9th the Farang Foundation presents world-renowned singer-songwriter Moshin Namju and he's going to be accompanied by renowned Farawala Quartet, and it's the U.S. premiere of On the String of Tears Bow. If you'd like more information, visit farhang.org, and that's F-A-R-H-A-N-G dot org. And just a reminder, you can listen to Center Stage every Tuesday night on KXLU Los Angeles 88.9. We're also streaming at kxlu.com. If you'd like to contact me, you can send me an email, and my address is mark at stageandscreen.com. I also have uh, Facebook and Twitter, all the social media stuff's out there, so if you want to friend me or like me or whatever it is, I hope you'd like me. Until next time, this is Mark Gordon, and I will see you center stage.